All right. Well, uh, I think I think I know everyone here, uh, but just in case, um, Andy McCarty, the director of the Dolce Center for the Advancement of Veterans and Service Members, and this is the next in our CABS Company Profile Series. Uh, we're very fortunate to have both uh, Jimmy and Chris from uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Uh, I think many of you probably know Chris, and you know I'll, I'll hand it off to them so they can do introductions, but. Uh, we're, we're glad to have them, uh, appreciate the partnership, and I'm excited uh, to hear more, uh, and I, I know everyone else is as well. Chris and I actually did a tour of the Fed uh, while he was still at Northeastern, um, and it was, it was very impressive, you know, certainly seemed like everyone enjoyed working there, uh, great co uh, company culture, uh, very supportive of the military, as well as, you know, folks that are, are still serving through the Guard and Reserve, so uh, I think this is a, a great company to work for, a great organization to work for. Um, and Chris, Jimmy, why don't you take it away? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Andy. And um, so we'll just, Jimmy and I will do some quick introductions, um, and then we'll go through the agenda and um, kind of talk, talk through some other stuff. So um, as Andy mentioned, I'm Chris Blunt. I, um, I served four years in the Marine Corps, active duty, two years in the reserves, uh, aviation supply specialist. I was stationed down in Jacksonville, North Carolina, deployed to Afghanistan 2011, and then um, I shipped over to Bahrain for six months or so in uh, 2012. I graduated from Northeastern with my bachelor's in business administration and uh, political science in December of 2019. I also completed four block um, in the fall of 2019. And that's, that's kind of what helped lead me to um, my role now here at the Fed uh, that I started in May of 2020. So I'm coming up on just about a year um, and it's been been great so far, and uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you guys a little bit more about the Fed. Jimmy? All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so my name is Jimmy Alexander. I went to Holy Cross College, did Army ROTC there, commissioned into air defense artillery. I uh, spent most of my Army time in Fort Irwin, California, and then I deployed to Afghanistan for about nine months in a provincial reconstruction team in 2012 got back, uh, went back to California, um, got out in 2013, um, kind of did the, the fun employment for about six or nine months or so, uh, started working at Silicon Valley Bank in their office in uh, Newton, just outside, uh, just outside Boston. And I started working at the Federal Reserve in 2016 in the um, statistics group of which Chris is currently a member. Uh, this past summer, I switched over to the bank examination side. And we'll explain what all those words mean as we go. Yeah, yeah and I, I will um, just as a, a quick disclaimer. So just so everyone here and, and anybody that, you know, views this later, the views and opinions that are going to be expressed throughout this presentation are solely ours and not official views of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston or the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. All the information that we're going to provide to you today, it can be found on the public domain. So just real quick, um, we'll do some intros, go around the uh, quote unquote room, uh, learn a little bit about the audience, uh, then we'll go into talking about the Fed as a whole, get into some of the areas um, within the Fed, some history about the Fed what it's like to work at the Fed, um, look at some uh, roles that are out there, and then we'll open it up for you know, Q&A and, and networking. So I guess we'll, we'll kick it off. Um, let me see, we can start with Cal. Uh, just to give a brief, you know, your name, branch, MOS, what your year and concentration is at Northeastern, and then uh, what are your career interests? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Cal Samara. I'm president of the Northeastern chapter of Student Veterans Organization. Um, I was four and a half years in the uh, Air Force. I was a uh, two Alpha 6X5, which is hydraulics maintenance on uh, aircraft. 
Um, I'm currently in my final semester of my bachelor's, uh, but also doing a uh, dual degree for my master's in public administration. Um, with that master's in mind, I, I kind of gearing towards the policy side of things and, and um, effective uh, change in government. Okay. Thanks, Cal. Um, I'm just going to go down the list of the order that I see it on here. Uh, Joe Reynolds. Good afternoon. Yeah, Joe Reynolds here. Uh, I'm actually not a Northeastern student. I am a member of the uh, four block and uh, accepted gracious invitation from uh, Andy McCarty uh, to attend. Um, I am a uh, former infantry officer. Um, I have been out in the civilian world working uh, primarily in financial services uh, and then into government service. Uh, as in the financial services, I primarily oversaw uh, TA operations and treasury operations, uh, which was the cash management system of um, one of the major financial firms uh, in Boston. Did a lot of OFAC, AMLO work, um, a lot of Fedwire, ACH, uh, systems contingency, uh, disaster recovery, business continuity planning. And uh, my interest is, is to uh, apply those skills back into the uh, private sector um, or government sector for that matter. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Nick. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Nick Kulivas. I was in the Army as a forward observer from 2000 to 2004. Um, when to Kosovo and also Iraq during that time. Um, after completing my undergrad at, at Keene State, I went to uh, Northeastern for some grad studies. Um, so I've been in my career for a little over 10 years now, and I know Andy um, through Four Block, where I help out as a career readiness coach. Um, and that's also where I met Chris and uh, Nick Zerpoli from the Fed. Um, so I'm just here today to listen and do a little networking. Um, I'm also the co-chair of the Veterans Network at Wellington Management. So thanks for having me today. Great. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Kenneth? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Ken Suen here. Uh, Air Force in a past life. Um, multiple different jobs, somewhere between developmental engineering, also known as playing with missiles, and mm -hmm. contract writing, which is a, a thankless job akin to taxes and, of course, running the Fed Reserve. Um, so very, very appreciative of, of all the fund finance metrics and oscillating interest rates that you guys get to play with and how that essentially changes the entire economy and definitely looking forward to hearing more there. Um, schooling. Uh, I was able to most recently pick up an MBA out of Boston College back in 2017. And at the same time, I happy to go through the four block program, which is where I ran into Andy. And I think I've seen uh, a couple of your names here and there. Uh, and since then, I've also stayed on to be a readiness coach, but certainly happy to chat veteran uh, matters with anyone anywhere. Uh, and then coming out of that degree program was uh, fortunate to be hired by Deloitte Consulting where I've spent the last three years essentially working on robotic and intelligent automation software technology, including chatbots and process automation um, for pretty much anyone, anywhere, and currently state government systems. So um, happy to answer anything on that as well, but I'll turn it over to uh, whoever you have next. Great, thanks, Ken. Taylor? Thanks, Chris. Uh, my name is Taylor Brownlee. I just retired from the Navy after 20 years, uh, formerly trained as an aviator, but also did tours. Uh, so I did a couple operational deployments flying off carriers, but also did uh, tours um, as a uh, ROTC instructor out at UCLA, uh, then as a recruiter, or now they call them talent acquisition specialists, trying to get more in line with the civilian world. Uh, then was a flight instructor for a few years. And then for the past five, six years, I've been a operational support center, uh, CEO and the XO. So the operational support centers are where the reservists go to do their 
one weekend a month. And if they call on Jimmy to go do uh, Jimmy, hi, how are you? By the way, I, I didn't, I apologize. I didn't realize that was you. I didn't never met you face to face. So <laughs> thank no you worries. for the call and thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't say hi. Yeah, no so worries. that's where the, um, the Navy says, Hey, Jimmy needs to go to uh, Djibouti or wherever. And, um, we make sure you're med medically ready, dentally ready, uh, trained and prepared to go. And then we make sure you get on your flight and go. It takes a lot of coordination. I made it sound simple, but it takes a lot of coordination to do that. Um, as far as uh, year and concentration, I'm not at Northeastern, obviously. I've um, uh, been out of formal schooling for a little while. I got the MBA uh, out at Pepperdine. And um, I'm really here. I'm thankfully not uh, looking for employment anymore, um, but I'm really here because I just have really liked the Fed. Uh, a lot of the people that I've met there have just been very helpful. And um, I met Chris and Andy was leading the four block. And that has been by far the best transition, you know, free COVID. So COVID throws a whole curveball and everything, but absolutely the best uh, transition um, assistance program that I have uh, been affiliated with or been a part of. And I've done several of them over the past year. Uh, so anyway, I uh, I, I want to be a part of uh, Four Block going forward. Um, hopefully, if Andy and uh, Michael have me, and uh, I just want to be here to network and continue all the the Northeast area. Want to continue talking with folks and just uh, stay involved with everything. So thank you guys for having me. Awesome, thanks Taylor. Tommy, last but not least. Hey everybody. Um... I'm Tommy Furlong. Uh, I served in the Marines a uh, little over four years. I was an infantry officer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, weapons platoon commander as well as a JTAC. Um, my year in concentration, let's see, I'm about to graduate uh, in three months. Um, so the end of June uh, with my master's in human resources. So really what I'm looking for is something in, you know, uh, just interested in the people operations field, um, really interested in doing like workforce analytic or analytics work, uh, things like that. Um, so I'm really interested in the Fed. Uh, I know Chris and Andy and the team here and uh, the different, uh, you know, just the awesome organizations they meet with. So I'm just really interested to, to hear what we all uh, have to offer today. Great. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks. Nice. All right, now we got that part out of the way. Uh, let's let's talk about the Fed. So, let's talk a little bit about the history of the Fed, and, and obviously, this is an abbreviated timeline of the Federal Reserve and um, a lot of leading up to the um, the Federal Reserve Act, which was signed in 1913. So, I thought this was a uh, kind of some interesting stuff. So, prior to um, you know, the Fed and um, our first currency in the U.S., which was um, the late 17th, early 18th century, um, was printed to um, finance the American Revolution, and it was known as the Continentals. Um, and basically, because they were issued in such quantity, it led to an inflation that accelerated, and this basically progressed as, as the war went on. Eventually people lost faith. And then the continental, uh, the phrase not worth a continental came to be uh, known as, uh, you know, the, the currency was basically utterly worthless. Um, you know, one of the, the leading founder, one of the, the leading figures for the Federal Reserve was Alexander Hamilton. And when he was treasury secretary, he was kind of urging for the US um, to start a, a central bank. And in 1791, that's when Congress established the first bank of the United States. There was, you know, throughout the years, some controversy going back and forth. Uh, so in 1811, Congress refused to renew the charter by one vote. And then again in 1816, Congress chartered the second bank of the United States. And again, um, following uh, basically at the hand of Andrew Jackson, who vowed to kind of kill anything associated with the Federal Reserve, Congress again refused to renew the charter. And then, you know, there was uh, some free banking. Um, there was the free banking error, as you can see there. 
and then following some um, you know financial panics and in, in the runs of the late 19th early 20th century um, it there, that's when the, the impetus really was for you know the Federal Reserve and then the Federal Reserve Act was signed uh, into law by Woodrow Wilson in 1913 and then we've been kind of assisting the U.S. economy uh, since then. So this is just a basic breakdown of what the, the Federal Reserve structure looks like. So you have the U.S., the Federal Reserve System, which is the Central Bank of the United States, and then some of the key entities, you have the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, then there's the 12 uh, Reserve Banks, and the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee. Um, and the Board of Governors on a regular basis is responsible for um, providing reports to Congress. Um, and some of the key functions, which we'll go on to a little bit more detail <clears throat> um, in a couple of slides. So it's basically, you know, we conduct the nation's monetary policy. We help maintain the stability of the financial system in the United States. We supervise and regulate certain financial institutions. We foster payment and settlement system, uh, safety and efficiency, and then promote consumer protection and community development. And then here's a map of the Federal Reserve System. So there's, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 districts within the Federal Reserve System. Um, and these were originally uh, created based on population at the time. Um, in addition to that, the 12th district in San Francisco, they have a Seattle branch that serves Alaska. And they also, in San, the San Francisco um, Federal Reserve serves Hawaii, um, American Samoa, Guam, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The New York Fed um, serves the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Obviously, we are District 1, and we are responsible for all of New England and most of uh, Connecticut, with the exception of one little corner that the New York Fed is responsible for. So we'll go into now a little bit about the Fed and talk about kind of what we do. And I have this video and hopefully this will work for you. Reserve Bank of Boston works to promote sound economic growth and financial stability in New England and the nation. We serve the public through our impactful research, bank supervision, and financial services. We believe that our commitments to leadership, integrity, innovation, diversity, and inclusion can have a positive impact on our communities as we strive toward economic well-being for all. We believe in... Making a difference. We make a difference when our experts ask and seek to answer challenging questions about the inequality of economic opportunity, the way our nation conducts monetary policy, and the effects of new payment technologies. When we inform policy decisions on opportunities for criminal justice reform, the impact of student loan debt on lower income communities, and the effects of a higher minimum wage. We make a difference when we work collaboratively to advance the stability and security of the U.S. Oh. US financial and payment systems. When identify and assess emerging technologies and work to combat cyber threats. When we ensure the soundness of our region's financial institutions and provide secure transactions for our nation's troops. We make a difference when we promote growth and opportunity in lower income communities. When we challenge our communities to collaborate across sectors to revitalize their economies 
when we give voice to community leaders, workers, and businesses investing in alternative socioeconomic models, and when we convene forums and provide a training ground for New England's future workforce. We make a difference when we celebrate diversity and foster a culture of inclusion when we leverage the strength that comes from our employees, both individually and collectively, in their variety of experiences, perspectives, ideas, and approaches to solve important business problems. When we are committed to delivering high-value work by modernizing business practices and exploring cutting-edge technology. We were created to serve the financial needs of the public. The work we do each and every day helps to shape a future that is inclusive, secure, resilient, full of opportunity, and able to adapt to an ever-changing economy. That's public service that makes a difference. Yeah, so that, that's one of the videos that the, that's out there on our public website, and I thought it was, you know, just a nice, uh, quick, brief breakdown of of who we are and Obviously, you know that that's a nice, nice tagline that I that uh, we have at the Boston Fed, which public service that makes a difference. And that was, you know, one of the ideas that kind of uh, drew me into the Fed that they live that, that you know we live in, and uh, the leadership certainly um, uh, encourages us to to emulate on a daily basis and all that we do. So. Now I'll uh, turn it over to Jimmy, who's going to talk a little bit more about um, some of the more specific things about what we do at the Fed. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so um, this next slide kind of covers things that Chris has mentioned already, but just sort of talking about kind of the four main goals um, of the Boston Federal Reserve. Now, some of these are what you'll find in any of the reserve banks. Some of the things I'm going to talk about are specific to the Boston Fed. Uh, so first, the monetary policy and economic research, to me, that's sort of, before I started working at the Fed, that was really all I knew about what the Fed was doing. That's kind of the research into how is the New England economy doing? Let's get all of the data we can. This is where your economics, you know, PhD types are going to be doing a whole lot of talking about interest rates and sending those up. Um, on the supervision and credit side, so this is where Chris and I both work, specifically in supervision. So this is just basically working with all of the, um, the, the chartered banks that are like a member of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, so on Chris's end, he's taking in deposit reports, credit reports, and he's making sure that these are all being reported correctly. Um, as a bank examiner, I go out to the banks and am kind of doing something similar where we're making sure that all the information is being uh, reported correctly um, and ultimately ensuring that institutions are managing their risk. So if you work at the Federal Reserve, you're going to hear the word risk, you know, 30 times an hour, um, because that is just kind of the, the, the Federal Reserve's mission. The credit side, that is, um, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you may, may, or, may, may or may not know this, but the uh, you know, Federal Reserve, it's called the lender of last resort. So it, you know, the, the Federal Reserve is itself a bank that can lend money to other banks. Um, you know, generally it doesn't do that that much, but of late it's, um, you know, with the onset of the pandemic, it's become a much bigger deal. You may have heard of the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that's where uh, we are. So the Federal Reserve is lending to banks. Those banks are then making loans to struggling companies, you know, think restaurants that, you know, kind of can't make their payroll. Um, and we're supporting that program. There's another thing called the Main Street uh, Lending Facility, similar concept, but just to, uh, just to bigger companies. Um, on the payment studies and strategy, so this is just looking at the U.S. payment system. Um, this gets very in the weeds on uh, on you know all things tech. Uh, I would say two of the bigger things that we're doing right now that I would say are you know are very are very cutting edge are the Fed Now. I'm sorry, Fed Now uh, system, and that is a um, payment system that just tracks all financial transactions on a 24-7 basis. So without, again, getting too nitty gritty, um, this is just a, you know, very like uh, you know, sleek updating uh, to something that basically to the financial world kind of has to be going through. This is very heavy into um, 
the use of the blockchain. Um, so if you don't know what blockchain is, blockchain is the Cons the technological concept that's used for things like Bitcoin, which most of us have heard of. Um, relatedly to Bitcoin, uh, there is a study being underdone um, in terms of using a digital currency issued by uh, issued by the government. So instead of just dollars, we'll also have like it'll be in this format of a digital currency. Um, that's called the uh, the Project Hamilton, um, and again, this is like this is the real cutting edge, uh, cutting edge stuff, and things that you know, I wasn't even aware that the Fed was doing when I first when I first started the job. And lastly, in the community development sphere, um, this is basically looking at what the bank can do to help uh, a lot of these post-industrial cities and communities in New England. Um, one of the big things there is like the working cities challenge and seeing kind of like targeted micro loans and things that that we can do to uh, to kind of, um, you know, operate outside of just our supporting banks and how we can help kind of the, the economy as a whole. Uh, next slide, Chris. Yeah, and so um, a little bit about kind of what the day in day out is like, what the culture is like. So this slide is just kind of pointing to, I would say, some of the standard things that you would expect. A strong focus on diversity and inclusion. Um, you know, to this audience in particular, the bank is very eager to to hire veterans. Um, we have a, a you know, we we emphasize volunteerism, I encourage innovation. We kind of talked about that with some of the the tech stuff, and um, you know, we're recognized for our environmental responsibility. Um, I'll go back to the uh, benefits. Uh, ultimately, we are all working for a salary. Um, so when we look at that, one of the things um, that you know sometimes gets lost is that so the Federal Reserve is not a government job. So the Federal Reserve is sponsored by the government. In a lot of ways, it's very similar to the government, but this is not like on the, the GS pay scale that we would have been used to in the military. So to that end, uh, we do offer, you know, competitive salaries with the industry at large. Now, you're not making, you know, say investment banker dollars, um, but you are absolutely making a good competitive salary. Uh, the, you know, we use a 401k, that kind of like the, the standard retirement plan that the Fed matches. Um, unlike a lot of companies, we have a pension program um, and that is a legally fully funded pension program. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, going anywhere. Um, you know, standard vacation packages, that, that sort of thing. The uh, the work life balance of the Fed is really terrific. You know, we're, we're, we're the, this audience. We were all we were all in the military. We know that you know, kind of the the work never actually stops, and you're getting phone calls at two a.m. about you know what what something terrible that's happened. Um, but uh, at the Fed, I mean, it's a you know you 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 do your work. You're generally not you know looking at much in terms of the the after hours and the and the weekends. Um, you know, of course, there, there are exceptions. Some of these are, you know, some of the some of the groups within within the Fed do exactly that. Um, but it is absolutely an organization that is looking to find that that good work life balance. Um, you know, for myself, you know, I'm a full time employee. Uh, I have an 18 month old, and you know, going to night school. I don't see how you'd be able to achieve that in a lot of um, in a lot of businesses. Um, but you know, the, the Boston Federal Reserve is a, is a place where I've been able to to make that work. Um, one of the things I love is just that it's a lot of career long employees. So when I did my interview, I was with all these people that had been working there for 20 years. Um, that's very much unlike the commercial bank that I used to work at. Um, you know, you just see people, you know, coming in, coming out, um, you know, and I think that's that's pretty common. But at the Federal Reserve, I think you get people that come in and, uh, and they stay in. The dress attire, it's a, you know, a bit, I would say like business casual, um, you know, some of the people, depending on your role, you might be in suits every day, you might be in you know, khakis and a button down, it kind of depends. Um, in terms of the, I mean, everything is up in the air because of COVID, but we are looking, you know, the, the, the Boston Fed has been pre-COVID trying to look at a, how would we increase work at home ability, what that looks like on the after, uh, after side. Uh, it would it would be speculation, but again, that's it's certainly something that we that we are looking at doing. Uh, next slide, Chris. So at the Fed, uh, we have these things called employee resource groups. So these are non-exclusive groups that anyone can join, but they're uh, generally looking at um, uh, you know uh, 
internal groups that are sort of focused on various like protected groups within the working uh, community. So um, for the one I can speak about the most authoritatively is the Veterans Employee Resource Group, um, of which I'm the chair and Chris is a member. And this is a group that basically we, you know, are, uh, we meet once a month, we do a couple of events during the year and our idea is sort of, um, you know, promoting our stories as veterans uh, to the bank at large, but then also seeing, um, you know, uh, anything we can do to kind of uh, promote the hiring of veterans uh, within the Fed and different things like that. But there is a, you know, this whole list here of the different ERGs. Um, there for you know various groups for um, uh, African American, Hispanic, LGBTQ. Um, you know, there's kind of a, an ERG for for everyone, and anyone can join these groups. And it's a great way to kind of like meet people outside of your your own little work silo. Uh, next slide, Chris. So in terms of the areas of focus, um, so, you know, again, we've touched on it a little bit, but one of the things that we you know, really want you all to take away is that the Federal Reserve is not just a place you can apply if you have a PhD in economics. Um, you know, the joke I always make is that if you've ever seen the movie, The Other Guys, when Mark Wahlberg is showing that he like does not understand what the Federal Reserve does at all, and that was basically me as I was first looking at it. I thought I can't apply here. I'm, you know, I was a political science um, uh, undergraduate, and I've you know only been working in the commercial side uh, for a year and a half or so. Um, but what you see if you start looking at the different roles and opportunities that are available, there are countless ways for you to work at the Federal Reserve um, that do not have to do with you know hard studies of interest rates and their effect on the economy. Um, a lot of things we do contribute to that ultimate mission, but there are a lot of different ways in. So on the data analytics side, if you're a, you know, if you know SQL, R, you know, um, Python, all those computer languages that I certainly don't understand, um, there is a place for you. I mean, we are a massively data intensive organization um, and always looking for, you know, uh, like the, 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 you know, a hard understanding of how you can use data, um, you know, not just how you mine it, but how you can create it and create usable data. The research side, uh, similar to the economic side, I mean, this is where you have a lot more of the, the, the heavy understanding of economics, um, you know, but we're always, they're looking for people at high levels, low levels, that sort of thing. Legal, everyone needs lawyers. Um, you know, I think, I think once you have that law degree, you know, you can go, you know, to, to any institution. Um, the financial analysis side, this is a little bit more what Chris and I do. Um, so this is a, uh, you know, looking at bank balance sheets, looking at their income statements, um, you know, and they're, again, they're always looking for people at, you know, the entry level, which is, you know, kind of where, where Chris and I started in our uh, financial analysis group, but also looking, you know, for any kind of seasoned employee, the more experience you have with this sort of thing, the better. But again, one of the things to take away is that, you know, this is not something I studied in my undergrad. Um, and this was something that I only had so much experience in. So it's not like you should see some like financial analysis and think, well, it's at the Federal Reserve. You know, that's that's not for me. I'm bad. You know, I don't know enough about that. You know, you have to start somewhere. And, you know, it's, it's a great place for you to, to build from. Human resources, it, we're a big organization, over a thousand employees of the Boston Fed with all of the human resource needs that you would expect. Law enforcement, we have our own law enforcement unit at the Boston Federal Reserve. Um, and a lot of the law enforcement officers we have are themselves um, military veterans. For the trading craft professions, you know, <laughs> we have over a thousand employees. It's a it's a big building. Um, you get a lot of the standard uh, contractor, subcontractor. You know, there's all kinds of work that is just completely outside of the realm of the uh, you know just kind of the money. Communications. Um, one of the members of our ERG uh, actually manages the. Uh, social media feed for the for the Boston Federal Reserve. Um, you know, we're a group that is active in the community, um, and that you know, kind of explaining what we do and what our mission is is uh, is vital. Uh, the computer engineer and computer science. You know, we we talked already about the data, but then there is also you know some of the things I was talking about before, like the Fed Now program or the Project Hamilton. And like I said, I mean, this is you know, this is blockchain. This is the the like the wave of the future, the cutting edge. Uh, this is a group that's rapidly expanding. Um, and if it's something that you know you have uh, you know interest in understanding, uh, this would definitely be a, a great place if you can uh, get get that foot in the door. Um, and then on the project management side. 
uh, that goes into, I mean, all the things you would expect from, from an organization like ours. So if you don't have, again, that kind of like finance background, but you understand how, how projects are supposed to happen, there's a whole, you know, there's the contractor side, there's the sales side, there's our giant cash floor. So all the, the hard currency that comes in and out, um, that all, you know, gets processed. Um, and, you know, you're going to need someone who understands, you know, how a, a well-oiled machine is supposed to work, which to me just screams, you know, like anyone who's, uh, anyone who's in the military. Um, and again, these are just broad examples. This isn't an exhaustive specific list, just the idea so that you can take away from this that your experience very likely translates um, into something specific that can you, you can then work at the Fed. Um, so to the next slide. So in terms of applying to the Fed, um, you know, first, I'm just going to give a background of how my application process went. Um, Chris will then talk about his and then go specifically into what you can look at right now. Um, so the, you know, the basic thing about the Fed is it's, you have to use the website. You know, that's what we always tell people. I think a lot of times you hear in the outside world, it's sort of, um, oh, you just kind of you meet someone they give your resume to HR and you just you know, go with that. Um, you know, what we always tell everyone is, it's great whoever you know, you have to apply through the website. That's the key thing. Um, I myself applied in, um, this was October of 2015. Um, it was about a month or so before I heard anything back from them. They scheduled an interview for about a month later. Uh, came into an interview, did a second round interview a few weeks later, and then I started in February. So that was probably on the longer side of the spectrum of what that application process looks like. Um, you know, Chris's experience was uh, was pretty different, um, but it's one of those things. You know, I know that there's a lot of uh, there can be a lot of frustration about you know sending in an application and waiting to hear back. Um, it just you know, kind of depends, um, you know, sort of on what the what the flow is at that time. So if you are applying to the Fed, um, you know, don't be alarmed if you're not hearing back one week, two weeks later. Uh, it it can be uh, a bit of a process. Then, you know, in terms of how my recent uh, role started, because this was all during post-COVID, this was more of an internal switch. Um, so, I, you know, I don't really think there's too much um, application there. So I think, uh, Chris, if you want to talk about how your hiring during the, the new era began. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jimmy. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it was it was pretty unique, um, obviously, in the, the COVID times that we're living in. Uh, I had put put in an application, I think it was in, in March or April um, of last year. And, you know, pretty quickly, um, I got contacted by the, the recruiter and, you know, started having conversations there. Um, and I was, you know, hired by May 18th. Um, and, you know, I think it, it probably helped a little bit that I had met Jimmy prior to, um, and I also um, had, had met um, uh, Nick Zerpoli from Four Block, uh, who was working at FedNow at the time, um, but he's since been deployed, or act, not, not deployed, but he's been activated. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, that's on the, you know, the opposite end of the, the spectrum for, you know, hiring experiences. So it, it's just a, an example of, you know, they are, the Fed is still pushing hard for hiring, um, especially during, you know, the times that we're in now. And there are a lot of, as Jimmy alluded to, a lot of different initiatives that they're, they're hiring for and they're, they're needing, you know, needing assistance with, with you know, the, the Fed Now program and some of the other um, lending facilities. So I would say the Boston Fed has, has been in kind of a, a growth phase um, given you know, the, the times and the things that we're supporting. So um, I figured we could uh, kind of just take a look at real quick, um, one of the positions that are, that, that are out there. So if you go to this link, um, it'll bring you to uh, the Fed, career page and can everybody see this screen? Yep, okay, cool. Um, and I, I figured I'd just pick one. Uh, so let me circle back here real quick. So as you can see out there right now, there's 56 jobs that are active and posted to the, the site. Um, I figured I'd just pick this strategic sourcing specialist. I figured 
beard, it's probably going to be, you know, somewhat aligned to somebody that might be trying to get their foot in the door. Um, and, you know, this is, you could have experience in, in project management, relationship management, um, you know, finance background, obviously a plus kind of what you want to be focusing on is, you know, what, what they're looking for down here and the knowledge and experience and the bachelor's degree and the, you know, the education background, which, you know, I would, I would say that a majority of the people that might be on this call um, or viewing this at a later time, you know, you're going to have this education. And if you're a veteran, you're more than likely going to have this, you know, um, level of experience that they're looking for. And then obviously, you know, just looking at if this is applicable to you and, you know, how you can kind of convey your experience, you know, <laughs> honestly convey your experience on your resume to kind of match um, what they're what they're looking for in a particular job. So figured that was just, you know, a quick down and dirty, you know, where you where you want to go, what you're looking for to apply. And um, yeah, I, I think, Jimmy, did you have anything that you wanted to, to add on this point? Uh, no, nothing else on that. Um, you know, just doing the point that if you, you know, if you're if you're looking to apply um, and you have any questions in terms of, you know, do you think that that applies? If you, you know, have any questions of us, it's one of those things, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know we'll we have the email on the next slide, but just one of those things that, uh, you know, don't let some of the words, uh, you know, frighten you. Really research that, see what's out there. You know, use LinkedIn, use our emails, ping anyone you want to in terms of asking them about kind of what what that's like, um, because sometimes the things don't translate all that well. Um, and it might be something that there's a role that you are absolutely able to do, but that, you know, it just might not translate that well in terms of how it's, uh, how it's listed. Yeah, for sure. So just want to thank everybody for, you know, your time and attention. Um, and now I guess we can, we can open it up if you have any questions or you just um, want to talk through anything, uh, we're happy to do that. Chris, I'll, I'll kick it off with a question. So uh, I think this is going back, you know, probably close to two years ago now um, when we went and visited the Fed and, and met with uh, Nick and Jimmy, and I, I'm forgetting her name, uh, but I believe she was from HR. Uh, Angela Middleton. Yeah. Um, so if, if someone, you know, watching today or, or uh, in the future decides to apply, I think it's pretty standard, you know, practice uh, across the board that you have to apply through an organization's website. Uh, but then that networking piece, um, you know, is there a way to highlight their application either through you or through, um, I'm sorry, Angela, was that mm -hmm. uh, just to, just to get eyes on? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, I think, kind of reaching out to either Jimmy or myself, um, that's, you know, going to be the first line of defense. And we're more than happy to kind of take a look at people's resumes and, you know, help out with the, you know, feeding that through to, to where it needs to go while also taking a look at the resume and doing, you know, a quick once over to, to make sure that, you know, it, it's going to be most successful um, when we pass it on to that, that next level. But yeah, we're, we're more than happy to, to take resumes and, and pass them on to kind of assist in the process or whatever the case may be. Great. Yeah, that was, oops, sorry, that, that was actually a question I, was, I, I had as well, uh, Andy, so I appreciate you asking that. Um, just as a way, <clears throat> just curious to see like how, how a veteran can sort of highlight their resume um, just you know, due to the fact that, hey, you know, if I'm applying to a position there, maybe, uh, you know, I might be graduating uh, with a specific degree, but, you know, transitioning out of the military might not have the direct experience related to that position. Uh, so how do I, uh, how do I translate my military experience correctly? Or how do I get, you know, really that highlight, you know, in that initial, uh, the initial application process. So, um, yeah, if it's if it's as easy as sort of just hey reaching out to to someone utilizing the contacts, and that's great. Right, and and yeah. to that end, you know, if it's one of those things where even if Chris and I don't, you know, know like maybe it's for a role that's not something you know that, that we've necessarily done, you know, it's certainly something that you know, like will certainly know people and they'll know people. So we've had that in the past where um, someone you know, reached out to me on LinkedIn, uh, she was applying for a role, and you know, I it, it wasn't for something that. 
that I really knew much about that, you know, you're just able to kind of forward the contacts along. And I, you know, also reached out to HR and just said, hey, I've been talking to, right. you know, to this person who's applying. Um, so it's kind of, it's, 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 le it's leveraging that. Some of it is just the, yeah, like, how do you translate some of that military stuff? And that's kind of the age old struggle. Um, and then some of it is just sort of seeing what you can fine tune for a specific role. Awesome. Yeah, and, and Tommy, I think to um, a little bit more to that point as well, you know, in my role now, you know, as uh, Jimmy had mentioned, you know, I'm in a, you know, more financial analysis type position, and I hadn't had that kind of experience, you know, I, I took, I had taken some accounting classes and some finance classes in college, but as far as, you know, real world work experience, it was more the operational piece in my operations experiences that kind of um, helped push, you know, my, my resume over the edge. So it, it's just being, you know, tactical and, 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 you know, being upfront and honest about what your experiences are, but also what your experiences are not, but what you're willing to do to kind of bridge that gap. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. I just wanted to jump in and add a little something that I, I was very frustrated with the website and, it's probably me, uh, but if, Chris, if you can go back to the website, um, or I don't know if those were screenshots or that was a live, uh, if that was actually your, your desktop, I don't know. I was really frustrated and I couldn't figure it out. I just got a brand new computer, so and, and I troubleshot all I could, but if you go to the sign in portion, you click sign in, it wouldn't let me sign in. And I don't know if I'm the only one that had this problem, but um, for some reason, I don't know if it was cookies or what it was, it would pop up and then I would enter in information, but stop right there. Then uh, at some point it says, if you're having trouble logging in, click here. Just like in the middle there, it says apply here. If you go to enter in your username and your password there and it doesn't work, it'll pop up with another screen that says, if you're having trouble viewing our website, click here. So I don't think I'm the only one having the problem, but you click there and then it's some sort of alternate website. Um, it, it's, it looks the same, but I don't know background wise what it's doing. And then it allowed me to log in. So just FYI, if you're having trouble logging in, read all the, the small print and there is an alternate login site. That, that's good feedback, Taylor. And yeah, yeah, certainly, you know, feel free to, to reach out to us if you're having that kind of trouble and maybe we can kind of point you in the, in the right direction. I would say a lot of times with um, kind of uh, website technical issues, if it's not working in a particular browser, maybe try a different browser. I know that sounds uh, simple and I don't, I don't mean to sound condescending in any way, but um, something as simple as that, it, it sometimes can be a, a quick fix anyway. Yeah. I tried all the web browsers. I even called Dell because I got the Dell <laughs> you know, support and, and I'm like, I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's right there where it says, if you're, ex if you experience issues applying on the website and then you click there, whatever, it just, if anybody's having trouble, click there and it, it it's just, it worked for me. So what, sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. That must've been a uh, wildly frustrating, but yeah, to Chris's point, I mean, if, if you're, you know, if, if, if that's down and it's just still not working, um, you know, you can, you can always reach out to us and we can kind of see if there's a, you know, if there's something going on, not that I would know how to fix it. Cause I wouldn't, I don't know anything besides Chris in terms of trying a different browser, but uh, it sounds like you did that. But uh, no, if, if, you, if you are applying and have, and having those kinds of issues and it's just not working, you know, let's don't hesitate to reach out and we can, you know, contact HR and see what we can do. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I know this isn't either one of y'all's uh, uh, field, but you, you talked about the community building program side of it. Uh, I'm just wondering how much field work is is uh, involved with that, or is it is it mainly structured in the office? Um, in terms, I mean, I, you know, and, it, and I, you know, said up front, my my understanding on it is not that deep. Um, but I know that, for example, in the Working Cities Challenge, I think they have um, like there is a big travel expectation um, associated with some of it. So I think in some of the areas it's for, you know, it might be in Connecticut. So the expectation might be that you're kind of out of the office, you know, Monday through Friday, maybe two, three, you know, two, three um, weeks a month, that sort of thing. Um, anything that would, any amount of travel would be spelled out explicitly in the, in the job application. Um, so it, it would, it would depend on the role. Some of it is definitely here in Boston. 
Um, but yeah, otherwise, if, if, for, if it's for a given role, if you're going to be going to random cities, it's going to say something like that. Um, it's going to specify like a, an expectation, uh, expected amount of travel and that sort of thing. Um, and if it's to a, like working in a specific area, it's also going to say that. Thank you. You know, who knows what the world of travel is going to be in the coming years, but, you know. Last call for questions. Yeah. Uh, well, this uh, again, this this was recorded. Um, so if you know anyone uh, who is interested in, in this information uh, and wasn't able to attend, uh, it, it, it will be put up on our YouTube channel, LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and if they have trouble finding it there, uh, just have them shoot me an email um, and I can get that to them. But Chris, Jimmy, thank you so much. This was great. Uh, you know, yeah. wonderful that that we can do this in this strange time um, and still get the information and, and great to see that you guys are still hiring. Uh, and we appreciate you lifting the hood and giving us the, uh, the uh, inside view. Yeah, thanks a lot. Pleasure, uh, pleasure to be here. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris.